Today I want to try different stamping techniques on these tags I made in my last video. For that I want to decide which stamps I want to use for the different backgrounds I have created on these tags and I also want to decide which technique to use on which tag so that everything fits really well together and that we can make these tags even more interesting. But the main goal is of course, as always, having fun and enjoying experimenting. Hi, this is Luisa Heinzel. Thanks for joining me today. Perhaps you want to have some fun with me. So take out your stamps and let's try something cool here. So I want to start with this tag here. <laughs> if you have seen my last video, you know why I'm laughing. Uh, you know, <laughs> some people see Mickey Mouse here, the others see boobies. <laughs> and one of you also have written that one of the boobies has even a nipple, but only one. <laughs> you cracked me up with that comment. So if you have missed the other video, I'm happy to link that down below this video so that you can watch how this came to life. And as you've heard in my last video, I was not so happy with the outcome of this tag, not only because of this weird shape here, but also, yeah, it was really weird. It's, it's, it has a lot of contrast and I mean, contrast is great, but no, let's do something with this. And I thought we could take this stamp. Again, you have seen me using this stamp in several of my last videos. I love this stamp. This is just gorgeous. This is called Bubbles. It's by Tim Holtz and Stamp is Anonymous. And the number is CMS449, if you want to check that out. For this tag, I want to try a mixture of two techniques. So the first technique that I want to try is I want to stamp with water and then remove the ink here and after that I want to stamp a portion of the stamp with ink so that we get a blending out of the water stamp impression if that is a word and the ink stamp impression. So for that I'm going to use some water and I'm going to spritz my stamp from relatively far away so uh, this would be uh, too close so sorry you can't the uh, can't see the spritz bottle anymore but i need only a mist of water here so make sure that you don't put your water spritz bottle too close to the stamp otherwise you would get yeah something like a loose impression of this whole thing <clears throat> then we take come on a dry paper towel and since I made this background with distress oxide ink, which is water soluble, of course, I can lift off the ink so that we can already see a little bit of this pattern there. But that is not enough for me. So I am just drying this a little bit and removing mm, drying is not so important in this case, but Removing the ink is important because I want to have fresh water that touches the tag when I stamp again now to be able to lift off even more ink. And then I'm going to stamp with oxide ink, but only a portion of the stamp so that I get a mixture out of both of the techniques. I have used um, Uncharted Mariner and Peacock Feathers to create this bluish turquoise background. And because of that, I'm going to stamp with Uncharted Mariner now. This is the oxide ink, but of course, um, the distress ink or any other water soluble or even a permanent ink would work here now. So let's decide where we want to put the ink. I think I want to have that mainly here in this area. So let's try to imagine where the ink has to go. Of course, you could also use like a darker ink, for example, 
black or something like that that would probably also look really nice perhaps we can also try that here so that you can see it uh, yeah. that is what I wanted uh, and now let's try to stamp with black first I thought this is great and it is great <laughs> I really like it but let's try to stamp in black as well so that you can see what more contrast could do on such a tag what about this area here and perhaps this area here and then we would need a third area perhaps here let's see if we can manage that so that would mean here okay let's do that in several different steps I think that's easier so then we can see in between how that looks <laughs> that looks totally different I mean of course <laughs> because we've done something here <laughs> but <laughs> I like how this area this really weird area is a little bit broken now um, especially here this turned out really really nice and I really love this combination of the ink stamping and the water stamping it's really subtle here in the background and also here but it has something do you know what I mean it's really interesting so let's go on with the next one and for that I want to take this and <clears throat> another stamp this says flowers and numbers <laughs> can you hear it <laughs> so I want to take some wild flowers um, they come from this set here it's called wildflowers also by Tim Holtz and Stamps Anonymous the number is CMS 25 three and now I want to try something that Tim Holtz calls smudge stamping for that I'm going to take gather twigs oxide ink and before I apply that I make sure that I have a dry paper towel or another dry thing like this at hand and then I'm going to ink up my stamps and when I have that I'm going to smear this around and now I've talked probably a little bit too much so this smears not so well but that doesn't matter I'm just repeating this step mm, it helps when your ink pad is relatively juicy so that you have the chance to smear relatively much of the ink around as you can see it works way better now this way this whole thing becomes like more a background stamp if you will and if you think that is not enough or if you get like weird shapes around the stamp impression you could also do a little trick I'm just taking this brush and I'm putting a little bit of the ink here and then I go from the outside to the inside so that I don't get any weird shapes from my brush to my tag and with nearly no pressure I go over this just like so to smear around a tiny little bit of this Mm, so then when we have that I think I want to also stamp over this with black and the, the main goal is to get an impression that looks like it is in the foreground then it looks like this and I really really like this the black and ink is not totally dry yet but you can see this is just gorgeous that looks so beautiful and perhaps you want to consider something if you want to try this 
we have some embossed areas here on the background yeah if you remember the last video we've made the background with oxide inks and then we've splattered some water and embossed those water puddles with embossing powder and when embossing powder is melted it's like plastic it's really slippery the oxide ink in this case here gathered twigs which i've used to stamp the first layer can't dry on this embossing powder that means when i smear over that it smears away from the embossed areas compared to stazon ink i mean that is a very big difference yeah because here it goes off but the stazon ink stays on <laughs> You got it <laughs> on the embossed areas and it will also dry here yeah so when i let this dry now air dry then later on this is permanent this black on the this embossed area and that is really interesting you can directly compare both of the flowers there on the right it's like the embossing powder is over the flower and on the left it's like the flower is in the foreground because it's stamped on the embossed area and that is <laughs> really cool i really like this effect <sighs> here's a little bunny um yeah <laughs> so <laughs> let's place this here again because this is not finished for me yet i want to stamp some numbers here these come from the eccentric stamp set by tim holz and stampers anonymous the number is CMS448 and I want to place some of those relatively randomly here to the um, outer areas. So let's take this first gather twigs oxide ink, dry paper towel, smear this around. Take the jet black ink, stamp over that. I think that looks really, really nice. But I want to have some black here or perhaps even here stamping this here so that the black is a little bit more balanced and we could even do that here so that we also get a nice mixture of these different like colors because um, if you stamp on a smudged impression it looks of course totally different than if you would stamp just with black in uh, another spot so we can add variation by doing that as well and i think that looks really interesting <clears throat> and here this background this looks really dreamy i would say because of that i want to try like a watercolor impression of the wildflower stamps. Let's start with Gather Twix again. I'm going to take my oxide ink pad and then I'm going to apply the ink to my stamps. And then I'm going to take my water spritz bottle and mist this. and stamp and that way we get a really loose impression like it was made with watercolor but only on those areas where no embossing powder is then it looks a little bit weird <laughs> so let's lift the rest off also to make sure that they can't get any weird areas uh, from
from the water on the embossing powder. I don't want to have that like moving around. That looks interesting. That looks really interesting. And now I'm going to take some of the Gather Twigs Oxide ink, put that here, spritz some water, take my splatter brush and I'm going to splatter a little bit to make sure that this looks a little bit more interesting and I have a little bit more of this color here and there. Hmm. <laughs> I, I have to admit, this looks really, really weird, but um, I think we can turn that into something really cool. But I'm a little bit confused now because I can't show you what I originally wanted to do. Um, and I'm just realizing that because uh, of those big embossed areas. So I show you what I have done <clears throat> in the German video. This is a tag that I have made with exactly the same color combination as this one. This was chipped sapphire and saltwater taffy and here the same. But as you can see the embossing turned out totally different. We have here those really really giant areas and here <clears throat> you nearly can't see them. It turned out really really delicate and it's really in the background. And because of that I was able to first stamp with the ink and then spritzing water exactly the same thing that i've just done here and then i've stamped with chipped sapphire over that this is that is this blue flower here and this one here and after that i've stamped this black flower with stays on black jet black to the foreground and this gives really much dimension i would say but i can't do that here because i don't have a permanent blue ink Mm, but I would need a permanent ink <clears throat> if I want to stamp over here um, and that will not happen on this tag but <laughs> this is what you could get but why am I telling you that please have that in mind if you want to do something like this you have to have that in mind if you have those big areas you need permanent ink to be able to stamp something to the foreground now but we are flexible <laughs> and we can just <clears throat> take our um, permanent black ink again. Mm, I mean, we don't necessarily need blue on this tag or more blue because here is already blue. So let's just take this perhaps and let's stamp that to the foreground with black. And that also shows <clears throat> that you don't necessarily need exactly the same things that someone has in his or her video because sometimes I see things on other people's channels and I think oh I would love to do that but I don't have that ink pad or I don't have that color I don't have that surface I don't have this or that or that or that <laughs> what they show in the video but I think the fun of that is mm, since you have been inspired by that person, you have the chance to see what do I have in my stash and what can I use to get a similar effect. And even if you end up using totally different things, then <laughs> the goal is reached because you have... Um, made it to your craft desk and you have created something no matter what comes out there and now I think something has moved here what happened there I think either the stamp or oh no either the stamp or the tag has moved look okay how can we solve that that is easy. That is really easy. Mm. When this is still wet, we can just go over this. And mm, I am a lucky girl because this accident happened mainly on the embossed area. So let's try something. Ooh. Huh. 
Oh, well. Can we please uh, take a little bit of alcohol? I happen to have some alcohol here. <laughs> That's coincidence. And try to smear this around even more. And I think it's even more coincidence that now that's happening exactly what I was talking about a second ago because now I'm trying to make the best out of this and with that I'm just discovering a really really cool thing I mean look this looks like a cloud or nearly like a dandelion in front of the other flower can you see that? It looks like you could see through this area. How cool is that? Looks like a little bit translucent. And the accident is gone because this part is okay, but the accident was mainly here on the embossed area. And I mean, what the heck? <laughs> that gives me so many new ideas. Holy moly. Okay, so let's see. Can we manage... This is all about experimenting. Uh, can we manage that this flower is here, goes behind, uh, behind this embossed area, and here it's like, you know, clear again, so that we get a second effect like there. Oh. <laughs> How cool is that? That looks like those flowers are growing through clouds. I mean, what the heck? They don't have to be in the foreground to be beautiful and visible and, you know. <laughs> and now it's growing through this hole there. Can you see that? That is absolutely amazing. Wonderful. Okay, <laughs> so let's see if we can make a fourth masterpiece today. <laughs> let's take this one here. This is my absolutely favorite tag in the whole uh, universe. It's so, so cool. So don't mess this up, Louise. <laughs> don't mess this up. <laughs> so the first thing that I want to do here is I want to take some lost shadow oxide ink that is really really light gray i want to take this stamp here from the eccentric stamp set to be able to stamp a little bit to the background This looks just amazing. <laughs> it's nearly not there, but it is there. <sighs> this makes me just happy. <laughs> okay, so then, um, when I saw this, uh, I immediately thought about one stamp, also from the eccentric stamp set, and that is this five. And here I want to try something that gives the stamp impression a shadow. Mm, for that, we are going to take Gather Twigs again, a dry paper towel, and we will first again smear this. And then, <laughs> when we are satisfied with that, we are going to take this stamp, clean it, and dry it. And then I'm going to take it, and I'm, I mean, like this, it would, if it's in this position, it would be in nearly exactly the same position like it was before. But now I'm moving it a little bit to the left, and a tiny little bit to the top. But that is like one or two millimeters so that I 
can hardly see this here. Yeah, so the, this outer edge or frame of the stamp. Just like this. So now I can just see a little, little, little bit of um, the stamping below. And then I take the stamp again. <clears throat> take my black ink. And then I'm going to stamp over this. <clears throat> yes. That looks absolutely fantastic. I also want to do something that I really enjoy. And for that, it's really good that my ink pad is so dry. I want to take my stamp again, because here it's relatively empty on the top. And I want to randomly... stamp here. Let's try that out first. Yeah. But I want to have something like a second and third generation look of this. Yeah, so this is not as black as this. So it looks like it's already the second generation of the stamp. And now I'm taking this and I'm just stamping where I think it looks good. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> that looks cool. Um, who is coming to clean this up for me? <laughs> I thought we can make these tags even more interesting by adding some quotes. And as you've already seen here, I've played around a little bit with those stickers that have the quotes on them. Because as you can see, these are now... <sighs> This, <laughs> when I look at this, this makes me just happy. This is so cool. Um, they are interesting. They are nice. They can be uh, just, you can leave them like they are. Yeah. But especially this one, I think you can see the difference. Uh, and I also want to show you that you can use something like this, those stickers, um, to decorate a tag even more and that you also de don't need like a focal point that is for example a bird or a fuzzy cut image a paper doll or something like that or a cluster or you know what you can take as focal point um, but you can leave this as it is and just add some stickers and that thing doesn't need any uh, anything more yeah um, I mean, as I said, you could leave them as they are. I could have left them like they were after my last video as well, of course. But, you know, I want to show you possibilities. So that's what we have here now. And I'm really, really happy with this. <laughs> that it's, it's just amazing. And I'm always so surprised how different results can get with like the same idea behind with just different techniques with the same mediums it's amazing it's just amazing the only thing that i want to do here is i want to add some splatters in black especially here on this blue tag oh perhaps i can try something make a why can't i Splatter to the nipple. <laughs> I want to. Now, look, now it's nearly gone. <laughs> and it makes this perhaps even more interesting. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so I hope that you perhaps have already taken out your stamps <laughs> perhaps you've already tried something out while watching this video if not try it it's so much fun and if you have any questions as always please feel free to write a comment down below the video i will try my best to answer your questions as soon as possible and i hope we will see the next time again with another creative idea have a very great day and see you the next time bye bye